Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the rabbit hole, and welcome to my brand review of Kinship Skincare. This is such a funny brand review. So I introduced my interest in this brand uh, about a year ago. I said I wanted to trial this brand in 2021, and I had so many people scare me out of trying this brand. So many people said, oh, that Kinship brand did not work out for me. And yet I had a few people say, you know, I do like some of their products. I love their sunscreen, for example. So I finally did it. I finally did a a bit of a different trial with this brand. We actually have a retinoid in today's video and I try to treat those very differently when I review them. If you saw my retinol serums video, you know all about this. So it's been about, I'm not sure if it's been six weeks or two months of using this, but I'm actually almost out of it. So we're doing a review before we empty a product. Whew, gotta get that review up. But hopefully that does make for a helpful review. I also have not tried this brand entirely on its own. It's only five products we're gonna be reviewing today. Uh, mostly I've been still using the Alpen Beauty moisturizers, which I'll link that video if you're interested. Otherwise, we have five products to talk about today. I'm gonna go off a little bit about the brand. I know some people aren't interested in that. Some people may have clicked this video just for one individual product review. And if that is the case for you, check the timestamps in the description box below for individual product reviews. What else before we start this video? Oh, I purchased all of these products in today's video with my own money, mostly from Ulta because uh, points, of course. Oh, and I am barefaced. I am very sorry if my face is currently uh, reflecting light back on you. It's, it's the sunscreen. It, it is indeed the sunscreen. I wear all of the products that I am talking about in these videos and <laughs> It's quite a glowy sunscreen. So a little bit of backstory on the brand itself. Kinship is a bit of a newer brand that does use a lot of lactobacillus, ingredients that are beneficial for your skin, or as they call them, like kombucha for her face. What drew me into this brand is that they do use a lot of unique ingredients. We have retinal to high here combined with salicylic acid. We have a, a purely mineral sunscreen. That's interesting. Um, but I will also tell you that in all truth, there are certain elements of this brand that made me go, ooh, in reading about them, and then other elements that made me go, ooh. So to take a little bit of info from the About Us page on their website, they say, we believe that quality, good for you ingredients shouldn't be a luxury. Everyone deserves healthy skin. Well, that's wonderful to see. So it actually is a pretty reasonably priced brand in, you know, a, a world in which there are skincare products that cost thousands of dollars. A bit exclusionary, so it's very nice to see, uh, you know, products that are at a price point that most people will probably be able to afford. And yet it's still not everyone. It's still not everyone. Now, the products are packaged primarily in plastic, but it is plastic that is of 30% recycled material origin, which I appreciate seeing. You know, like I talked about in my Alpen Beauty video, in general, I do think that glass is a better option but not for every last person. If you are not able to recycle at all, please do not buy glass. It is worse for the environment to throw away glass than plastic. And Kinship does go another step further, which is kind of a requirement if you ask me. I think every company needs to do this right here. And what I'm about to say is they have a recycling program. So once you empty three products, you send them an email and they'll send you a return label so you can ship them back to the company and they will recycle them. They're working on efforts to help clean up plastic from the ocean, which is fantastic to see. They're doing this very interesting uh, collaboration effort where uh, rather than put their money into marketing programs, they're working with small black owned businesses, which is great to see. You know, I'm a bit frustrated that we had a lot of these conversations in 2020 and it does kind of feel like they've dropped off the map in 2021. So it's really nice to see Kinship still focusing on that. That is very important. Important. But there are a few elements where I'm just and that includes statements like this clean must be the standard it's non-negotiable we exclude 1300 questionable ingredients banned by the EU that sounds great in theory but the problem is there isn't a standard for clean like I always say I don't have a problem with people choosing to purchase clean products but I think it is important to recognize that it's not a regulated term 
and until it's got some kind of regulation around it, well, anybody can throw it on their packaging. So it's a little hard to say it's non-negotiable at this point. And then we also see on the website here, buy to barrier unfriendly ingredients, which is a list that has some promise. I do agree that synthetic dyes and fragrances can be a big problem for some people. But this list is kind of lumping everything together in a way that I don't love. See, what you have to know about me is that I want people, I want customers to know what they're buying and why. Why are we choosing to exclude certain ingredients? So in this list here, you know, they say denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol at high percentages can be a drying ingredient, but let's not forget that it is all about how much denatured alcohol you're talking about. If you have a very small amount, it may help with penetration of your skincare ingredients. And then this list is petroleum-based ingredients. That's one where that's really more about principle. So if you choose not to support the petroleum industry, my goodness, I understand that wholeheartedly. But the reality is that is not a dangerous ingredient for your skin's barrier. Instead, it's actually an ingredient that's used in a lot of healing products or a group of ingredients, really. Uh, benzoyl peroxide, that's a tricky ingredient. It's another one where you want the correct amount. Silicones also can be tricky. Some people do report problems with them, and yet uh, by their nature, there's nothing really inherently barrier damaging about them. So, you know, this is what I was talking about with uh, clean beauty brands sometimes giving you uh, misleading information. And maybe it's not intentional, maybe they're just trying to simplify things, but I think the problem with oversimplifying things is that you do lose some of the nuance. And one more very important note with this brand, especially for those of you with allergies, yes, they do avoid synthetic dyes and fragrance, but they do still use certain essential oil ingredients. And whether we're talking about synthetic or natural fragrance, it is possible to have an allergy to both to both, to either or, so you will need to check ingredients. Again, some of the products are fragrance-free, but not all of them. So let's go ahead and get into individual product reviews. Overall, I do like most of these products with one exception, so we'll just go ahead and go through uh, a standard routine, starting with the Naked Papaya Gentle Enzyme Face Cleanser. So I do have the small size of this. I actually purchased the uh, Lit That Zit Go Breakout Clearing Trio. So I have to admit, I do actually really like this product. It has such a beautiful texture to it. It's this uh, creamy texture, but not to the level of the Sioris Cream Cleanser. It's more of a, a light creamy with this nice, pleasant smell to it, kind of a bit tropical. We'll talk a little more about the ingredients. So it does contain papaya. That's going to be your source of not just enzymes, but also a great source of vitamins. Again, though, we're talking about a cleanser. So keep in mind that it's it's hard to conclude how much of those ingredients are staying behind on your skin, which is why I always focus on, uh, you know, how gentle is a cleanser. I find that to be the most important aspect. It does also contain some amount of oils. We have jojoba oil, we have sunflower oil, and also those probiotic rich ingredients. So I have to admit it's a very well done product. I believe they do uh, sell the small size if you want to just give it a trial as well. But yeah, I, I like it. Please know that I don't use products like this to remove makeup. Sometimes I get that question. I'm not the person to answer because I love and default to cleansing balms. I use them all the time, even just to remove sunscreen. But did this pair well with those? Yes, absolutely. Oh, see, now I regret going in order because the one product that I don't like has to be the second in the reviews. That's okay, it's the only miss for me. This is the Insta Swipe Lemon Honey AHA Pads. Oh, this one was just not for me, y'all. It just was not. I'm also really surprised to see a product with the word lemon in the name. It seems like that is very much not on trend in the skincare community, and there's good reason for that. See, that's because in the DIY skincare circles, people were putting pure lemon on their face, which is just not good for your skin at all. Realistically, you can formulate with lemon. You could use it to adjust the pH of the product. You could use it for some antibacterial properties, but there's a catch that it still won't work for everybody. And also you have to be very careful with the amount 
utilized. They're using lemon oil as well as lemon extract. I would rather not see those ingredients. There's also honey in here. That has a lot of promise for me, but I don't like lemon as much as an ingredient. It can be problematic for a lot of people. And of course you have to be diligent about your sunscreen as well if you're using lemon containing products. Uh, also it has AHAs in it and I think the interesting thing for me about this is that uh, they're talking about how on the website they talk about how it leaves a stinging sensation. It definitely does and I definitely don't like that. Also, they really are kind of very small pads. You see the size of this? You see? This is very small. And they're kind of dry, which I saw a lot of people saying uh, in the uh, reviews on the Alta website. I think with this one, it just boils down to I think there are better options. You know how we have had that in the ranking that we've been doing for months on this channel? Yeah, I just, I, I think there are better options. It will not be a repurchase for me. I finished this by using it on my chest area, by the way. Did not like using these on my face. Let's talk about a product that very pleasantly surprised me. This is the Bright Wave Energizing and Brightening Eye Cream. It is a completely fragrance-free product that, uh, you know, some people were calling this a dupe for the Ole Henriksen Banana Bright Eye Cream, which is exactly why I was so interested in it. And I would say it actually is, but less irritating. <laughs> this is such a perfect daytime eye cream for me. Oh my goodness, I've been absolutely loving it because because it does give you a bit of a color correcting effect. Now, I will always say this because it is true, not every person needs an eye cream. It is certainly an optional step. <laughs> not every person needs a day and a night cream as I use, but if you want to use products like that, you are certainly allowed to. And that really is the appeal for me. You've got a fragrance free product that gives me a little bit of brightening. I'll even have a clip showing you what this does when you apply it. It's the perfect thickness for me. It's not too heavy, but not too light. Works wonderfully under makeup. And the ingredients are also actually incredible. We have some sea buckthorn oil in here, which is part of what's giving it that color. More of those probiotic ingredients. We have oat oil. That's a great ingredient for calming your skin. We have squalane mushroom extract. We have some algae ingredients in here. It's really a beautiful formula. And although it's a little bit of a more pricey product, it's still half the price of a lot of other eye creams that I've enjoyed in the past. Actually in glass packaging, this one is a hit. This one makes me think that Kinship has been listening to feedback and has decided to go more in the direction of what people want. Well done. Okay, back to another not fragrance free product, but one that I was very interested in regardless. This is the Pimple Potion Retinol and Salicylic Acid Acne Treatment. What an interesting idea. This is a product that is 2% salicylic acid plus retinaldehyde. This is what drove me to try the brand. See, both of those ingredients are must-haves in my skincare routine. I dedicated two videos to each of those ingredients just last week. And to see them together in a product is amazing. To even see retinaldehyde in a product is amazing. So I was so interested in this, but also really intrigued from the start because they're calling it uh, a, a spot treatment and yet they do say you can use it all over. So you know I treated it like a serum, right? You know I wasn't just spot applying my retinaldehyde. Why would you even suggest that when retinaldehydes work better over time? People should be spreading them across their whole face. Maybe I should say in my opinion, because that is ultimately my opinion, but a, a lot of the published literature does agree with me. Now you may remember we talked about this just last week. We do have the active ingredient panel on this product because it is claiming to be an acne treatment, so they must disclose that it is 2% salicylic acid. I will add, I would love to know how much retinaldehyde is in this product. It is very, very difficult for it to become an absolute favorite for me without that critical information. Now, I did see some people complaining about the color of this product. It is bright yellow. That is not because of synthetic dyes nor any dyes, actually. That's because uh, retinaldehyde is yellow. We have Bacuccio, avocado oil, Sika. Those are all some of my favorite ingredients. But then we also do have some essential oils. We have orange oil, lavender oil, rosemary oil, which again, might be a problem for some amount of people. You know, overall, I will say I've actually really enjoyed using 
doing this because it has simplified my skincare routine. I just every other night apply this. That's how I apply my retinaldehyde and how I apply my BHA. And it has freed up my morning so I don't have to worry about applying salicylic acid. And I would say overall, uh, my acne has stayed basically at the same level. Uh, I wouldn't say it's improved from where it was before. I wouldn't say it's gotten worse either. So I think with this one, it's so close to being a product that I could see as a favorite for me. Oh my goodness, Kinship. If you can just reformulate, take out those essential oils, and uh, disclose the amount of retinaldehyde, this could be a holy grail for me. It's so close to perfection, and yet it falls just a little bit short. Let's end this video with what is probably Kinship's most popular product, or at least their best-selling product. This is the Self Reflect Probiotic Moisturizing Zinc Oxide Sunscreen Broad Spectrum SPF 32. Quite a name, indeed. It's an all-mineral sunscreen with a little bit of a tint to it. Again, I will make sure to show you a clip of applying this, as that is a very important element in choosing a sunscreen. But there's more details than just the application itself. We're going to cover everything with this one. So let's start with the ingredients. We have 22.4% zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is, of course, a great choice. It protects you against both UVA as well as UVB. The formula itself is very rich in antioxidants. We have lactobacillus ferment yet again. We have some brightening ingredients, turmeric, licorice root. We do not necessarily have fragrance. I've seen a lot of people say this is a fragrance-free product, but it does contain vanilla. Vanilla is a little bit of a tricky ingredient. You could certainly argue, well, there, there may be some antioxidant benefits to vanilla. Yeah, for sure. But I also think if you asked a five-year-old if vanilla is a fragrance, they'd probably tell you it is. It's funny, Kinship describes this as having a vanilla scent to it. it. Smells like Fruit Loops to me. I don't know how. I don't know how these ingredients come together to smell like Fruit Loops, but it does. But I would say overall it looks like a pretty non-irritating formula that I think will uh, work out in terms of not causing a reaction for most people. However, when we get into will this really work for everyone, there are some more details you should know. So when we're talking about a mineral sunscreen, we are of course always talking about ingredients that can look kind of white once applied. Uh, the old white cast, a bit of a problem in uh, ancient sunscreen history of 10 years ago. So I will tell you that for me, it doesn't leave a white cast, but I'm a little pasty. You may have observed that, so it's very hard for me to say with any level of confidence whether this will work for people of a deeper skin tone. It's very hard for me to say. If you have tried this and personally know, you can always comment, but I just simply don't know. I worry. That's why I bring it up, but I don't actually know. And the other thing is... I would say this is a very glowy sunscreen. I'm pretty sure I even alluded to that at the beginning of this video. Yeah, it's, it's shiny. Hey, that's been trendy for a while, so there may be a lot of people who really enjoy that. But for me, yeah, it's a bit surprising to see. It definitely makes me reflect light everywhere that I go. Nonetheless, I do like it as a primer that works well, but I don't think every person wears makeup. You know, if I threw a foundation and some powder on top of this, it wouldn't look too glowy anymore. But on its own, it certainly does. And also, uh, I would say it's a little bit sticky. I put my hair up today because otherwise it was going to stick to my face. And yet, in saying that, I'll also add, this is a mineral sunscreen that isn't too drying. The vast majority of mineral sunscreens do feel drying, and this one isn't too bad. So I guess with this one, it's still not my absolute favorite sunscreen. I still had to repurchase it for this trial because I lost my original tube, so here it is back in my collection. But, uh, you know, it, it's fine. I prefer it, again, for makeup days, especially days where I put powder on. That's, that helps with the stickiness. But I'm sure it works for a lot of people. A lot of people seem to call it their holy grail, and overall, I do think it's pretty well done. So that's about it. To give you some conclusions, I would say overall, this was actually quite a successful trial, more so than I anticipated. I liked the cleanser, I liked the eye cream, the sunscreen is all right with makeup, and uh, the pimple potion 
is a product with a lot of promise where a few tweaks could actually make it a holy grail product for me. One miss in the exfoliating pads for me personally, but that's about it. That's my review of Kinship. As is always the case, if you have tried these products, please feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. You do not have to agree with me. Feel free to disagree. Share your honest experience for others watching this video. And that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did find today's video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.